I've been coming here since I was well, bloody young. <laughs> I rode the horse into the pub for a bet. There you go, Ned. Come and be on us. Threw a black snake on the pool table just for a joke. The pub is the centre of town. That's where all the locals come to meet. How's it going? This is Australia's majestic Capity Valley. Two and a half hours northwest of Sydney, you'll find this spectacular part of Australia. And believe it or not, it is the widest canyon in all of the world. This valley offers breathtaking scenery and vibrant biodiversity, captivating tourists and outdoor enthusiasts alike. And right at the heart of this awe-inspiring natural wonder sits the Royal Hotel Capity. The very first version of the Royal Hotel at Capity was built in 1840. 50 years later, tragically, it burnt down. One of the stories goes that the local women thought that their men were spending far too much time here, so they torched the joint. It's got some new owners, a father and son combination, and I can't wait to meet them. Jordan, mate, new owner, initial thoughts when you first came across this pub? Mate, honestly, I've been driving past it for probably 10 years. I didn't realise it was here till four years ago. I fell in love with the building, just so I couldn't get it off my mind, and it, we just ended up falling into it. We do like it. A little bit older, a little bit more rustic. Give us the tour. Easy. Pretty cool. Massive old stone wall as your as you grand entry. Yeah. The whole front of this building is still heritage listed, which is good because it should stay the same forever. Does this work? <laughs> Ding. This is where all the action happens. <laughs> Mate, the pretty classy front bar. I love the cosy feel. You get the vibe straight away. Yes. I think we've managed to somehow cram every little bit of what an old pub should be into this bar. The old wood, the fireplaces, there's some good old history on the walls, some pictures of our locals. And we got the, uh, the trusty step there, which our uh, shorter locals love. <laughs> huh? I haven't actually seen one in a pub like that before. The locals love it. They get right up on there and they like to tell us exactly how they feel. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> Plenty of beers on tap and a couple of uh, local ones as well. Yeah, yeah. We do love our local stuff. We've got the boys from Three Tails. They are at Mudgy. They've been very supportive of us since we got here. You've got a, a library in the place. Yeah, mate. Just another quirky aspect of the pub. You get your travellers on their own coming through here. Yeah, nice. And they will grab a book and go sit out there in the sun and have a beer and a read. A guide to herbs, if you've got, yeah, a bit of Bob Marley. I'm not sure if that's the kind of herb he means, but it is, it is capity. It is. <laughs> People drop in here and go, oh, I came here 20 years ago, and some bloke rode his horse into the bar. <laughs> that's Chapo. <laughs> An amazing man. A real good country character. Chapo is a gentleman. He'll walk a rose into the kitchen and give it to one of the girls. Old school way where you're just trying to make someone's day. What's your real name, Chapo? Mark David Chapman. Same bloke who shot John Lennon. Is that right? <laughs> Chapo, tell us about a little bit about your life story. I was actually born in King's Cross. No way. Yeah. God love mum. <laughs> 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 I didn't go to school much, um, and I've been here since I was about 14 when I come here. No way. How did, how did you end up coming to Cape in? i got relatives that live at Running Stream, so they took me in yeah. and looked after me. No way. Yeah. So, pretty tough childhood, and then came out to the country and things sort of changed a bit? Yeah. Brought a house, sort of block of land next to the cemetery. Nice and peaceful up there, mate. <laughs> So what's kept you busy for uh, for the last however many years? Oh, doing the shearing sheds, contract fencing, uh, and the powerhouse. I've been retired there for a couple of years. Tell us about living in, in Capity and what's, what it's been like. Oh, it's been good. Um, we had some exciting times here at the pump. 
I rode the horse into the pub for a bit. The horse was in the bar for three hours. Another time, I don't know, I threw a black snake on the pool table and it went down the hole. <laughs> so I had to pull the lid off it to get it out and then the bastard bit me. Why did you bring a black snake into the pub? I just for a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Till I bit me. And another time, the wild pig go through the front door one day. Dropped the big shit and then started coming back and attacking people. So it was cranky. I just got a board up and kept pushing it back. Tell us about the new guys that have taken it over. Father son combo running the place now. How have they? Yeah. Are they? Have they been welcomed in? Oh, they have been. Yeah. yeah. And I put shit on them every day. Yeah, good. Just, just to keep them on their toes. welcomed in by the locals? Well, we're only, we've only been here for two years, so officially we're still blow-ins. Uh, we've got another 28 years to go before we're local. <laughs> Father and son combination, how do you guys do it? It's actually a lot better than making decisions yourself. That's right. He's been very modest. He, a lot of people's old mans, they, you know, it's my way or the highway and he's never been like that, not once in my entire life. So you're kind of rebuilding yourselves as well and moving in into a country town that needs the pub to be here. Well, that's what I love about not just Capity, but pubs in country towns. Yes. They're vital for the community. And it's not the alcohol aspect, it's the community aspect. Like if you come to Capity, the pub is the centre of town because that's where all the locals come to meet. And it's just so different from where I grew up in Sydney. What's the toughest part about running a pub, in particular this pub? It's very quiet during the week. And just getting people to pull it off the road. Everyone's so obsessed with the A to B, which I get it. You know, people just need to look at the journey as part of their holiday, you know, as much as the destination, because there are some cracker little spots on the way. You see what happens to towns that don't have country pubs. They, yeah. it's, it's horrible. A road that's 120 kilometres long, we're the last pub on this road, which I think is really sad. We just need to, to, need to make sure that we survive. So there's still a pub on, on that Mudgee Road. Shit. It's, it's a big pub. How many rooms have you got? Mate, we have 14 rooms and about 27 beds within those rooms. Yeah, it's quite a lot. The whole footprint at the top of the building is just rooms. Yeah. Um, if you've got one of these, I think we've got six rooms on this side. Yeah. You can open that door and step out onto there for your morning coffee. and. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, really is. Get here and make sure people are driving up the highway. Yeah, make sure they're doing 50 through our town. Yes. Which is a few and far between, but there's some good ones in there. <laughs> but yeah, these back decks are unreal. So you get people coming here and going, staying at the pub and then going and checking out some of the natural features of this awesome area. They are gone at daybreak because there's so much to do in the valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everyone's out here adventuring. You've got the Turon River and the valley there and it's just, it, it, you can spend weeks. You can camp in the national park out there. Um, if you're adventurous, if you're a little bit less adventurous and you want a little bit of more luxurious as well, you've got Turon Gates out there. So we've, you've got this massive area out here and there were plenty of people camping when I got here this morning. We've actually just started accommodating all the RVs and things like that. We don't have any facilities to offer, but mate, if they're willing to just come out, park up the back, be fully self-contained, come into the pub and buy a meal once a day, we'd love to have them. Families that hit the pub together, stick together. Keeping rural communities warm and tight-knit. Meet Rick and Danielle. After some bloody awful luck, they ditched the city and moved to Capity. The local pub became their refuge, offering jobs, helping them meet neighbours and building lasting friendships. Tell us a little bit about your story because there's... Uh... A nice sort of synergy with, with your story and, and James and Jordan. You, you've known these guys for ages and now you're sort of in the same town. We bought our property out here um, nearly 10 years ago so that our kids could ride motorbikes and we would come every weekend. So you, you guys are from Sydney? Yeah, we're from the Hawkesbury. 
and so your circumstances changed recently and you find yourself in Cape Tell us a little bit about your story. Yeah, so uh, Rick was motorbike riding on the property and had a bad accident and broke his neck. Turns out I, I squashed four vertebrae in my neck and broke a heap of stuff and, uh, and they found another two breaks between my shoulder blades. He walked into the hospital and they were gobsmacked as to he was walking in there. After, of course, he refused to go. His career went down the drain. Yeah, lost my career. Not physically capable of doing his work anymore because of the accident. And then that put us financially behind. We had to sell one of our properties and we all, as a family, took a vote. Lord. And even the kids wanted to move out here. A big decision, but we're so glad we did it. Amazing. We absolutely freaking love it. So it was a shit accident, but... Best, worst thing to ever happen. Best, worst, best yeah. worst thing to ever happen. Yeah. That's such a cool way to put it. How are the kids uh, enjoying a, a very different lifestyle now? They love it so much. Whole big change for them to go to a small school. Yep. But it is an amazing school and they just get so much care and attention. And yeah. Only seven kids at the school and we've got three of them. Ah, that's, that's amazing. You've both picked up work here yep. at the pub after moving to Cape Verde, knowing these guys. Yeah. I do all the mowing and gardening and that here. Um, so yeah, sort of just get a bit of free reign. And... Up there changing the beds and cleaning the rooms and stuff like that and just, I'm happy to be here. Yep. I really enjoy Friday nights behind the bar, yep. um, working with the locals. And... That is unreal. Yeah. It's good for you both, surely. It, it really is. Home life is so much better than it used to be. And... Being a plant mechanic in the city, yeah. I was always at work. Like I've never seen the kids, never picked them up from school because I couldn't. Um, but now I'd, I'd pick them up from school nearly every day, drop them off nearly every day. It's a beautiful story. I'm sorry that happened to you, but I'm glad that. Yep. No. So we. For everyone, <laughs> and, 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 apart from the pain and everything, it's like yeah. you know, it's just such a yeah. nice story. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. No worries. Thank you. Scattered across this great big country of ours, you'll often see these gorgeous buildings, old railway stations. Unfortunately, like many others, this one hasn't seen passengers since 1985. And there are community calls to bring back passenger trains to stations like Cape Verde. Thanks for having a chat with us. That's all right. Tell us about Cape Verde. Yeah. I've been here since I was about six months old. Wow. Went to school here, yep. uh, and I know more or less everyone here. A lot of people here go to the pub. Tell us about your relationship with this pub. I've been coming here since I was well, bloody young. People that were leasing it, they just up and left. We come down here one day for a beer and it was shut. We knew the owner of it, so we rang him up and said, listen, Tony, They've just walked out of the pub. He said, yeah, I know it. I said, you're going to come up and open it. He said, no, I can't. With the business I've got, I can't get away. He said, do you want to have a go at looking after it just for three months? He said, and then uh, we'll come over and we'll get someone to take it over. And we were here for seven years. Unbelievable. How was your time running the place for seven years? It was good. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, very nervous to start with. How was that working with your wife with no experience running a pub? It must have been a pretty steep yeah, learning curve. It was, but she's pretty versatile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she went and got a license and everything. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Tell us about the best times that you had here running the place. Just when we had karaoke here and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Just being here, sometimes we wouldn't shut till two or three o'clock in the morning. You know, we never had any trouble. And uh, do you remember your first beer here? I do. As a bloke just up the road was a neighbour when I was with my first wife. He was a really good dart player. There's a dart board there. And he said to me, come down the pub and have a game of darts. So, yeah, come down. I'd just drink me lemon squash and that. After he down here about three weekends, he said, have a beer. And I said, no, don't drink beer. No, go on, have a beer, you know. So I had one and that was it. And there were some really good dart players here. That bloke who taught me into having a beer, he was fantastic. I wonder why it went out of fashion. Don't know. Cheers, yeah. mate. Oh, cheers. Been a pleasure. Oh, 
it's just fresh air and open paddocks and trees and just so it happens you have a craft distillery out the back as well in the pub another reason to come yeah we do mate we do crafties out the back here um, he specialises in whiskies, but he does a whole range of other alcohols. Most of the time, keep samples at the bar, so come in, let us know you, you're interested, and you can have a taste of the bar, and we sell everything there as well. Call me Crafty. Crafty. Yeah. Mate, we're in your shed where you spend a hell of a lot of time. Tell us about the place. Tell us about how you got into it. In the early 2000s, drinking whiskey. Then I got a few distiller mates, uh, and I thought, I want to have a crack at this. Yeah. I really want to have a crack at this. And I was working at the time, and I said to my wife, I think we can make some money. <laughs> it was a project. It was a single barrel. And I, I worked with a distiller mate of mine. And uh, so one barrel became 10. When it became 10, he said, Crafty, get your shit out of my shed. Get your own shed. Yeah. Today, we're doing something pretty special. Whiskey, honey, liqueur. We do things a little bit different. We're rough and ready. The brand is rough and ready. What do you need to make whiskey? To make whiskey in Australia, uh, or any brown spirits, it's two years. Yep. All right. Two years in a barrel. Two years in wood. But just because it's two years doesn't mean it's going to be a great whiskey. Yep. Uh, it can be a shit whiskey. It, it can be. And you don't know, or you're testing along the way. Hopefully. You're testing along the way. We've got aged whiskey. We are, we're up to seven years now on some of our whiskey. Nice. Um, we're about roughly 800 metres above sea level. From a whiskey standpoint, it's great for uh, maturing the whiskey. Okay. Because we get, uh, we get the heat in the summer. Uh, the cooler nights and in winter, it gets freaking freezing. Yep. And when it's cold, that really works the barrels. Yep. Yeah. Amazing place. That's awesome. The locals like to sit out here and chat, and uh, we're having a lovely conversation about a very interesting car that we just saw up the road. Tell us a little bit about your car. We do the Beyond Bitchland Rally, which support Beyond Blue. How did you get into that? It was a drunken conversation. During one COVID, night. And during let's do COVID. Something wild. Yeah found the car, BX Commodore. We target small businesses, pay a donation to Beyond Blue to put their business on the car. We went to pick the car up and I just went, oh my God, is that my car? I don't like attention. You can't do things that you're not meant to do. <laughs> it's held all over the place. This year we start in Gundagai. They take the dirt tracks to get you to the next town. So the people that actually started the rally, their daughter committed suicide. It was their wish to try and help bringing awareness of Beyond Blue to that community as well. That's really nice. Every country pump has blow-ins. These two didn't even know what blow-ins meant until just now and I had to explain it to them, but what's your story? Uh, so just working in Wellington on a solar farm, I'm a Sparky, and then met this one in Sydney and had a couple of nights in Sydney and then on the way back and we saw this cute little pub. So we're coming. He didn't just meet me, we've been together for a while. <laughs> it did sound like a pickup. <laughs> yeah, we live together in Brisbane, but now we're in New South Wales, so just passing through. Great, so you're doing some work in Wellington and you thought, let's just get out and see the country? Oh, it's nice getting out of the city though. Like it's honestly, this feels like the real Australia. As soon as you're out of the city, it just feels such a different vibe. So chill. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's just friendly. Like no one's rude. Everyone's helpful. It's good. Yeah. Good food. Good drinks. Yeah, what, yeah. what do you want? Um, good after food and drinks. <laughs> that comes with good drinks. Yeah. <laughs> it's a flow-on effect. <laughs> Everyone who knows me knows or I love my kid. So I just thought for my next tattoo, I just wanted to get something that everyone can do. Pubs like this one are a vital part of rural life. Keeping things lively and more importantly, united. They're where neighbours become like family. Gathering to swap stories, lend a hand and form long-lasting friendships. These meetups build connections, strengthen ties, and bring many communities together. And this is a, the centre of the community to a large extent. People gather here and um, you get information here, you get support here. 
it's important to the community. But during the big bushfires of 2020, this pub provided support to a lot of people, including the RFS. It was very important to the RFS. When the chips are down like that, during those big and frightening fires, it came very close. It was so important to have this community hub. And it's still a big fundraiser for the RFS here. Um, every Friday night there are raffles here. Yeah, you don't sort of see that if you just stay in the city. You do not. No, it's not the same. Tell us about the day. We've been out here Easter Saturday. You're sort of just finding your feet in the place. How was the day today? Phenomenal. We, we just had such a busy day, um, really successful day for us. Our staff have had to have worked extra hard today. It'll be nice to see that sort of um, turn into people, more people moving back into the country areas. Absolutely. I mean, once you get a taste of the country, you want to be there. Lifestyle in the country now is just so much better than in the city. It's a pretty special place. It is special. It is special. You know, I've been to plenty of city pubs. You walk in, you have a beer, you walk out. You know, country pubs are, are something different. We're, we're a real community and we welcome people into our community. It doesn't matter where you're from, come on in. We're gonna have a great time. Yeah, that's awesome. And are you busted? Are you tired? You're working a lot of hours. Man, I was tired on Thursday. <laughs> Um, we're now on Saturday, yeah. uh, and I've got two more full days to, to go. But, you know, at the other hotel, we dealt with the bushfires. We had storms that damaged the hotel. We had COVID shutdowns, which left us in a hole. You know, and it was just four, four and a half years of depression for me. But the last four weeks here have just lifted me right out of that. And I, I'm just so positive for the future. And a lot of that is because the community has, here has made us feel so welcome. Yeah. It just gives us so much hope for the future that you know, we've turned the corner and, and things are just gonna build from here. This is our future. As we say goodbye to Capity, we leave with a deeper appreciation for this incredible pub. The lives of the folks in this small village, its colorful characters and rich history to the shared laughter and tears. This beloved establishment keeps the spirit of rural life alive and thriving. Here's cheers.